spark of light into the void The shadows ran away from your voice In the darkness now I'm falling to my knees Will you speak that same voice to me? From emptiness you speak life At your voice the blind began to see And the lame can walk, the captives are set free A hardened heart can finally start to feel Will you speak that same voice to me? Perhaps the Lord, you made beauty, you make me new When you speak to me, I hear your voice in whispers my Greetings and thank you for tuning in to another telecast of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to be able to come your way and bring God's Word to you uh, and spend this time with you in prayer. We are grateful uh, to each of you who have been uh, contacting us, writing to us, uh, letting us know that you are watching these telecasts. Uh, your email to us uh, will encourage us and continue to uh, encourage us to keep bringing these telecasts to you. Uh, what I'd also like to uh, encourage you to do is to uh, make use of the free resources that we make available on our church website. Uh, you can go to our church website, apcwo.org. Uh, you'll find all our free books, free publications there, our sermon recordings, the recordings of our Sunday sermons that are preached here in our church uh, in Bangalore, and uh, many other resources that you could use for your personal growth for you, the ministry that you are doing, 
uh, in your local church, just feel free to use them. They're all available for free. Uh, so uh, we encourage you to do that. Tell others about it so that they can also make use of the resources available on our church website. You know, God has called us to live overcoming lives, victorious lives, lives that um, are not uh, overpowered or dominated by things around us. Rather, God has called us uh, to live a life that is victorious and that overcomes. And so, over the next few episodes, I want to talk, spend some time talking about overcoming. Really talk about how to live an overcoming life. A life that overcomes or that has victory over or that dominates or has mastery over the world, the flesh, and the devil. These are our three greatest enemies that we will have to fight and contend with as we go through life. The world, the flesh, and the devil. And so we want to talk about how to overcome. How can we live as overcomers? But as we begin this um, series of messages, I want to start out, first of all, by saying and, and clarifying to us that we have been born to overcome. That is, you inherently, because you are born of God and because you're a child of God, you have the capacity to live an overcoming life. You are an overcomer. You have whatever it takes within you in your life in Christ and in your identity as a child of God and with the resources that God has given to you and me, that we have the capacity to be overcomers and to live overcoming lives, to live victorious lives over the world, the flesh, and the devil. So let's consider some of these scriptures uh, that emphasize this to us. 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 4, these are verses that we've been looking at in our recent episodes, where we see that in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, whoever, which means anyone, who believes in Jesus is born of God. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are born of God. That means you're an offspring of God. You are part of His family. His life and nature is in you. You belong to Him. Now, what does it say about those who are born of God? In verse 4, it says, And everyone who was born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the Bible makes it so clear here that everyone who is born of God is an overcomer, is, is, has the potential, has the capacity to live victorious overcoming lives, have mastery over, have dominion over, dominate things that are in the world, the flesh, and the devil. So you need to be convinced that because you are born of God, you are going to live an overcoming life. You are going to live a victorious life. Now, where the position where you and I may be currently uh, may not necessarily be one of an overcoming overcomer. Maybe there are areas in our life where we uh, may be dominated ourselves, where we may be facing defeat, setbacks, and so on. But we can come out of all of those things and we can transition in, we can move to a place where we live as overcomers for the rest of our lives. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 brings this out for us. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So really in Romans 5, Paul is contrasting what happened through Adam and what is ours through Jesus Christ. So he says, you know, Adam, through his one offense, he put us all in subjection. He brought us all in subjection to death. So through his one offense, death, and all the other things that came in, sin, sickness, disease, uh, uh, su uh, subjection to demonic powers, all of that came in through one man's offense, death, uh, Adam, through his offense, all of this came in and we became subject to all of that. On the cont contrary, and in contrast to that, what he's saying is, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. So Adam caused all of the wrong things to come into our lives and put us in a place of subjection. But Jesus brings, releases abundance of grace 
and the gift of righteousness upon each of his people, upon us as believers, and he puts us in a place of dominion so that the Bible says that we reign in life. So what do we reign over? We reign over everything that we were once subject to under Adam. So everything that we came under and became subject to because of Adam's offense, now in Jesus Christ, because we have received grace, abundance of grace and his righteousness, we now rule over. We now have mastery or dominion, kingship, rulership over all of those things. Sin, sickness, disease, our demons, our the things of this world, all of that which once dominated and controlled us, we now reign over them through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's the life that we have in Christ. That's what God's called us to live. And you need to see yourself as somebody who has been born of God, as somebody who has received abundance of grace, as somebody who has received God's gift of righteousness, so that in this life, as you journey through this life here on earth, you can rule. You can reign, you can have dominion, you can have authority, and you can be a master over those things that Adam put us in subjection to. So there's been a huge shift, there's been a big change, and now we need to learn how to live this overcoming life which God has brought us into. The Bible makes it so clear that the Lord Jesus Christ, his earthly life, is the normal Christian life. The life that Jesus lived on the earth as the Son of God, as the incarnate Son of God, when he uh, confined himself to a human body and walked the earth, that life that he lived is a prototype, is a model for us to follow. That is, we we are here to live as Jesus lived. So, the normal Christian life, what is it? It's just the life that Christ lived. And that's the life that we as believers in Christ, those of us who are born again, we are called to walk as he walked. Uh, And, uh, you know, when you look at the life of Jesus, there was nothing that dominated him. He was master of everything. He He was master over the world, the flesh, the devil, situations in this world. He dominated. He was never once controlled or dominated by the things of the earth. You, you, you know about uh, the, the incidents in the Gospels. For instance, there was a time when he was with his disciples on a ship, and they were going across the lake, and there was a great storm in the lake, about to sink the boat, and they wake him up because he was asleep at that time. And uh, they said, Lord, don't you know we're about to sink? We're perishing. And he comes up, and he is master in that moment. He dominates the wind and the waves and the things that threaten his life and say, no, these things are not going to be so. He commands the wind and the waves to be still, and he and his disciples reach the other side. There were times when demons and others, uh, other uh, oppressive spirits were uh, around him, in people, through people, but none of them perturbed him. None of them disturbed him. Every situation that he walked into, he dominated. He was master. Now, uh, Jesus said this in John 14 and verse 30. He said, the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Now, Jesus says, you know, the time has come, or the devil is going to uh, come against me, but he has nothing in me. That means the devil has no access into my life. He has nothing that can, through which he can control or, or dominate or influence me. The devil has no access to me. Jesus was master over situations, circumstances, over the devil, and over everything that he walked into. Now, the Bible tells us that we are to walk as Christ walked. First John chapter 2 and verse 6 says, Whoever says that he abides in him, that is whoever says I'm, I'm in Jesus, the Bible says that he ought to walk as Christ walked, as he walked. Meaning our life on this earth, the way we live our life on the earth, should be a, a identical, should be a, a, a copy, should be a patterned after, should be modeled after the life that Jesus lived. So we walk as Christ walked. That's the normal Christian life. That's what we are called to. First John chapter 4 and verse 17, the latter part of that verse. Of course, in that chapter, uh, John is talking about love and, and the power of love and the fact that because there is love, there is no fear in love. We know when we stand in judgment, there will be no need for fear. And as he says all that in First John 4 and verse 17, he then goes on to say, because 
as he is, so are we in this world. He says, you know, the reason we stand in judgment and there is no fear when we stand in judgment because perfect love has cast out all fear. He says, uh, uh, there is no fear at all. And then he continues saying, look, our life on the earth, as he is, so are we in this world. We are to live our life on the earth the way Jesus would have lived that life. And he has lived that life. He's demonstrated that for us during his earthly life and ministry. So I want this thought, this truth to grip your heart that you are called to walk as Christ walked. That's the normal Christian life. That's the standard we are pressing into. That's the standard we set for ourselves. If he walked in authority, if he walked in dominion, if he walked in mastery, if he walked as an overcomer over everything he faced, then that's the life you and I are called to live, and that's the life we are going to press into, and we are not going to settle for anything less. Now, before I close, I also want us to bring, bring this to our attention that the salvation that Jesus came to give to us, it includes a victorious life, a life of victory over the world. Many times when we think about being saved, about being born again, we think about, you know, coming into right relationship with God, which it is, and it's a great uh, part of our experience. We think about an etern uh, of life in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is included in uh, salvation, our experience of salvation. Yes, we will be with the Lord forever. But don't forget that salvation which Jesus Christ came to bring for you and me includes a life of victory, a life of overcoming, a life of dominion here on this earth. Let me give you a few scriptures that tell us about this. In Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says that he gave himself up for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of God, our Father. So he gave himself for our sins. For what? That he could deliver us, set us free, rescue us, bring us out from subjection, bring us out of the control of this present evil age, this world. So that means once we were in subjection to this present evil world, all that's going around us, but Jesus Christ died for our sins so that he could bring us out of it, deliver us from this, so that we are no longer in subjection to the things of this present evil age. So the things that are in this world, that control people, that dominate people, we have been delivered out of that. And that's a part of our salvation. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, the Bible says that the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So what is this passage telling us? That the salvation which God has given to us freely by His grace through His Son, Jesus Christ, includes this. It includes our redemption, our freedom, our deliverance, our setting free from every lawless deed, from everything that uh, people of this world are controlled by, the sin, the behavior patterns, and all of that. Jesus Christ came, and as part of the salvation He brings to us, He redeems us from every lawless deed and he purifies us to himself. He brings us out clean without being controlled by any of these things that are in this present age, in this present time, this present world system. He brings us out of all of that and he purifies us for himself. Right here, right now, as we are journeying through this world, we live as a peculiar people who have been redeemed by the Lord. So this is the third truth I want, to, I want you to grip want you to grip your heart that the salvation Jesus Christ has given to you includes a life of victory, a life of, a, of an overcomer in this present world, in this present time. So you and I can live as overcomers. You and I have been born, or I should say born again, to overcome. You and I can live as overcomers over the world, the flesh, and the devil. 
We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today as we uh, began the first message in this series on overcoming, learning how to live as overcomers, over overcoming the world, the flesh, and the devil. Stay with us because I believe this, this series of teaching will bring something into you, will, will cause you to rise up to a new level in your walk with God, will bring freedom into your life in areas uh, that, that you think are in bondage and you know are not right before God. So I want to encourage you to stay with us on this series. Invite your friends to join us. And in case you miss any of these episodes, remember you can always watch these online on our church website and make use of the resources on our church website anytime from anywhere. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we give you thanks for your word and the truth of your word that sets us free, for the truth of your word that propels us, oh God, into new realms in you. And Father, I pray and invite the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to touch every person, God, who is watching. And I pray that the power of the Spirit come upon them, set them free, break off every yoke of bondage, break off every yoke of sickness, disease, and every oppression upon their lives. I pray that the power of God touch them right now, Lord, and lift them up into the realms that you want us as your people to walk in, O oh Father. I thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And remember, until next time, live life to Jesus' name. for you when I don't want to hurt another for you open my mind to know your truth without doubt sing for you
It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders' conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you if you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that All People's Church is doing across India. Admissions are now open at the APC Bible College for the two-year full-time course in English starting July 2017. For more information, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College.